What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be sharing with you these 5 amazing tips that are going to help you when working with topography in Revit. I'm going to be showing you how to adapt your topography to certain situations, how to kind of play around and just some additional tips for creating building pads, also how to set up your uh, topography so it looks in the best way and uh, also uh, just a few tips on how to how to view it in different views but anyway before I get started I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial it helps me out a lot and if you haven't already I suggest you subscribe because I make three Revit tutorials each week and also if you want to get access to my either my project files or some of my advanced one-hour courses I make those courses every week and for each of these tutorials I upload my project files to my patreon also the courses can be found at patreon so check out the first link in the description if you're interested in something like that but anyway with that out of the way let's get into this five amazing tips for topography in Revit so I'm just going to be using the architectural template here in Revit and once we're here uh, just in the level one floor plan if I go ahead over here and use massing and site and let's go with the topo surface as we're creating some topography and if I click I'm going to get a warning. Now I can start placing points over here but as you can see nothing happens. Well that's because by default I'm just going to exit out of this. By default a rabbit uh, doesn't really uh, allow you to view topography in the floor plans. If you go to the site plan and go with a topo surface as you can see you can create your topo surface. I'm just going to delete this one. But if you go to level 1, you can't view it. Now, if you want to be available, uh, uh, able to view it, you need to go into Visibility Graphics. Now, you can either go here in the Properties tab when nothing is selected on the screen and find Visibility Graphic Overrides and just open that up. Or, alternatively, in my opinion, a better way is to just type in VG in your keyboard. And there you go. Okay, so once we're here, you need to find your options for topography. So just scroll down and find let's see okay here we have topography now don't mess it up don't go here to site as you can see for the site most of the things are already checked but for topography you need to go over here and check topography and you're going to open everything up and you should probably have everything checked like this everything except the last one and i'm just going to mention a bit later on why i don't want to uh, select this one and then just hit apply okay and now if we go here into topo surface let's see oops let's exit out of this yeah topo surface uh, just make sure that the elevation is set to zero and now if i start placing points we can see our topography okay i'm just going to escape out of this uh, as i usually don't like to do topography in floor plans because uh, sometimes your topography is going to be going above a level uh, above level one so that's why you probably want to be doing it in site plan but if you want to be able to do it in level one that's how you accomplish that okay so once we're here in the site plan let's now explore how to create some topography so first I'm just going to type in UN for units and let's switch this to meters as I prefer working in meters especially when uh, uh, making some topography with large uh, 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 large differences in height so I'm just going to go here to topo surface let's place some points over here at zero then uh, let's go here at elevation and let's place points at something like I don't know like four meters so let's do a few over here kind of like that and then let's go to 10 meters hit enter and go like this now, you may notice that here, when I was creating this, I kind of went around. So all of these are kind of going in a kind of an arc. So you don't want this one to be going on the inside. And the reason for that is if I go into 3D, uh, you might be getting problems. Okay, in this case, it doesn't work. But yeah, let's say we have something like this. So if it's close to this side, it's start going to start to give you kind of like a hole over here kind of a, an edge and you don't want to have that so that's why you kind of keep it on the outside and now it works better so you don't get that ugly ridge on the side so let's pull this point out and leave it here where it should be maybe a bit on the inside like that okay 
So we've got our topography in place, we've got points at different levels. Now let's explore these lines that we have over here, but before we can do that, let's just go finish, and there we go. Now, if I zoom in, you're going to notice that I have these thicker lines over here, and probably if I were to change this to something like 2500, yeah, now you can see it even better. We have these uh, black lines uh, here on the bottom, here in the middle, and here on the top, and then the, the rest of them are kind of thinner. Now, if you have your thin lines on, you won't be able to see this, so just make sure to kind of uh, turn it off. Now, I'm going to go here to Model Site, and you have this arrow for additional settings, site settings, and here you have options for that. So first thing you need to do is you need to set up the increments. Now you have your main increments, which is like these like contour lines, so they are at 5 meters, so they are these thick uh, black lines, and if I set that to, I don't know, something like 3 meters, and hit apply, as you can see now they appear every 3 meters. And for these increments for our uh, for these thinner lines, they're over here, so you can set that up at, I don't know, like 0.5, hit apply, and now as you can see, there's more of them. Now for this example, I'm just going to leave it at 1, hit apply. Okay, and also uh, you can uh, set up like the starting increment, so it says here uh, passing through elevation, and it's at 0, so if I move that to something like 1, hit apply, as you can see now, everything jumped up one increment. Now I'm just going to drop that to zero. Okay, and one more thing, I'm just going to open that menu up again. Here you can set up the material of the ground. So uh, you set up the ground material over here, and then if you select this thing, you select your surface material over here. So if I want this thing to be uh, grass, here I set it to grass, and then here, I set the rest of the ground because grass is just on the surface, it's just a thin, kind of, uh, thin, thin surface line, and the rest should be earth, and you can change the material over here if that's what you want. I'm actually just going to change it a bit, I'm going to give it a an earth kind of a uh, uh, texture, and just hit OK, hit apply, OK, and there we go. Hit apply again, OK. And now if we go into realistic, as you can see now it's all earth, but if you select it and change the material here, you can set it to grass. So I'm just going to type in grass, and there we go. I, I prefer using this plant one as it's a bit lighter than the grass one. So I'm just going to hit apply, OK, and there we go. OK, and it looks good, but you're probably thinking, well, I can't see the, the, the earth. Well, for that you need to create a section box, so just go over here to section box, and then select it, gonna move it in a bit, and now you can select, you can see that earth. And of course, if you don't want to see it, you can always uh, go to hidden line and then you don't have to look at it. Okay, uh, so that's how you view these sides. If you want to see kinda in realistic that uh, ground, you have to create a section box that's just cutting a little bit. If it's uh, not cutting, uh, it, if it's not being cut by a section box, it won't be visible. I don't know, it looks kinda weird when you orbit like this, but that's how Revit works as far as this thing goes. Okay, now I'm just going to turn off that section box as I don't really need it anymore. Okay, so next thing I would like to go over is creating uh, your uh, your building pads. So here we have this option for a building pad and uh, let's explore it. So you just, if you hold your mouse over this so it shows you, you can just create kind of a building pad for your building. So what you need to do is just go to site plan or one of the elevations, go building pad, and then let's just create a rectangular building pad over here, hit finish, and if we go into 3D, it looks like this. Now, it's going to create a building pad, if you select just the pad, it's going to be kind of placed at the level 1, of course you can change it, you can place it at level 2, in this case it looks weird because it's above ground, so let's bring it to level 1. You can also give it an offset, so I can give it an maybe 1 meter offset, hit apply, there we go. But the problem with the building pad is it's an actual element. It's a building element. And if I go here into edit type, you can actually adjust its structure so you can add some layers over here. Now that's good if you have kind of a flat foundation, which you're not always going to have. So I don't really like this option. So what you can do, uh, just kind of a, a, a quick fix, you can go here into edit type going to edit and let's type in 0.1 so this is like one centimeter and for the material let's use earth 
And if I just go OK, OK again, apply, OK. There we go. So I only have Earth over here and it's really thin and it's not going to kind of uh, look ugly in my sections or anything. It looks a, a bit more natural than having that, uh, that building pad that you have to kind of incorporate in your building. Okay, one more thing is how to adjust your site to any geometry that's created. So what I'm going to do is just view it like this. Okay, so level two is kind of at top of this uh, building pad. So I'm just going to go to level two and let's create a floor. So just do a floor like this, go into 3D. Okay, it's in the wrong spot. Okay, we can make it a bit larger. It looked so small in that view. Okay, so let's say we have something that looks like this. So this is basically your uh, some geometry, maybe a house that you're creating. And usually it's not going to be kind of in the air like this. So what you can do to adjust the terrain so it looks a lot better is you can go here into your site plan select your double surface, go into edit surface, and then here we have these points at 4 meters. So I'm just going to go here to modify, place point, go at 4 meters, and just place a few of those 4 meter points around this thing. Okay, once we have this in place, let's place another few exactly on this geometry. So I kind of missed there, so I'm going to fix that a bit later. But yeah, let's do like this and this one, let's host it there. Okay, so we've got these points here and if we go into 3D, they're all at four meters, which is not something you want to have. So let's maybe uh, actually drop these down. So what I'm going to do is just select all of them. Let's do, I don't know, 3.5. Maybe even less, three. Yeah, now it looks a bit better. Okay, so once we have this, now we need to attach this ground to our building and for that just use the align tool. The shortcut is AL and make sure that multiple align is selected. So you want to have it checked over here. You select the bottom surface of this slab and then you just start selecting the points and you go all the way around for these inner points. Just like that. And now when you hit finish, as you can see now, uh, the ground is perfectly adjusted to your uh, geometry that you have created. So that's how you do that in Revit. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this uh, quick tutorial on the five amazing tips for creating topography in Revit. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for any future tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.